Leviticus chapter 13 And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priests. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh, and when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague in sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy, and the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh, and in sight be not deeper than the skin, and the hair thereof be not turned white, the priest shall shut up him that hath the plague seven days. And the priest shall look on him the seventh day, and, behold, if the plague in his sight be at a stay, and the plague spread not in the skin, then the priest shall shut him up seven days more. Then the priest shall look upon him again the seventh day, and, behold, if the plague be somewhat dark, and the plague spread not in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is but a scab, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the scab spread much abroad in the skin, after that he hath been seen of the priest for his cleansing, he shall be seen of the priest again. If the priest see that, behold, the scab spreadeth in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprosy. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall see him, and behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and it have turned the hair white, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising. It is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean, and shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if the leprosy break out abroad in the skin, and leprosy cover all the skin of him that hath the plague, from his head even to his foot, wheresoever the priest looketh, then the priest shall consider, and behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. But when the raw flesh appeareth in him, he shall be unclean. And the priest shall see the raw flesh, and pronounce him to be unclean. For the raw flesh is unclean, it is a leprosy. Or if the raw flesh turn again, and be changed unto white, he shall come unto the priest. And the priest shall see him, and behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. He is clean. The flesh also, in which, even in the skin thereof, was a boil, and is healed, and in the place of the boil there be a white rising, or a white spot, white, and somewhat reddish, and it be showed to the priest. And if, when the priest seeth it, behold, it be in sight lower than the skin, and the hair thereof be turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague of leprosy, broken out of the boil. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hairs therein, if it be not lower than the skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And if it spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. But if the bright spot stay in place, and spread not, it is a burning boil, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Or if there be any flesh in the skin whereof there is a hot burning, and the quick flesh that burneth have a white bright spot, somewhat reddish or white, then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the hair and the bright spot be turned white, and it be in sight deeper than the skin, it is leprosy broken out of the burning. Wherefore, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hair in the bright spot, and it be no lower than the other skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And the priest shall look upon him the seventh day, and if it be spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. And if the bright spot stay in his place, and spread not in the skin, but it be somewhat dark, it is a rising of the burning, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is an inflammation of the burning. If a man or woman have a plague upon the head or the beard, then the priest shall see it the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry skull, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. If the priest look on the plague of the skull, and behold, it be not in sight deeper than the skin, and that there is no black hair in it, then the priest shall shut up him that hath the plague of the skull seven days. And in the seventh day the priest shall look on the plague, and behold, if the skull spread not, and there be in it no yellow hair, and the skull be not 
insight deeper than the skin, he shall be shaven, but the skull shall he not shave. And the priest shall shut him up that hath the skull seven days more. And in the seventh day the priest shall look on the skull, and behold, if the skull be not spread in the skin, nor be in sight deeper than the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the skull spread much in the skin after his cleansing, then the priest shall look on him, and behold, if the skull be spread in the skin, the priest shall not see the yellow hair, he is unclean. But if the skull be in his sight at a stay, and that there is a black hair grown up therein, the skull is healed, he is clean, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. If a man also, or a woman, have in the skin of their flesh bright spots, even white bright spots, then the priest shall look, and behold, if the bright spots in the skin of their flesh be darkish white, is a freckled spot that groweth in the skin, he is clean. And the man whose hair is fallen off his head, he is bald, yet he is clean. And he that hath his hair fallen off from the part of his head toward his face, he is forehead bald, yet he is clean. And if there be in the bald head, or bald forehead, a white reddish sore, is leprosy sprung up in his bald head, or his bald forehead. Then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the rising of the sore be white reddish in his bald head, or in his bald forehead, as leprosy appeareth in the skin of the flesh, he is a leprous man, he is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean, his plague is in his head. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, Unclean, unclean. All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled, he is unclean. He shall dwell alone, without the camp shall his habitation be. The garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be a woolen garment or a linen garment, whether it be in the warp or woof, of linen or of woolen, whether in a skin or in anything made of skin. And if the plague be greenish or reddish in the garment, or in the skin, either in the warp or in the woof, or in anything of skin, is a plague of leprosy, and shall be showed unto the priest. And the priest shall look upon the plague, and shut up it that hath the plague seven days. And he shall look on the plague on the seventh day, if the plague be spread in the garment, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in a skin, or in any work that is made of skin, the plague is a fretting leprosy, it is unclean. He shall therefore burn that garment, whether warp or woof, in woolen or in linen, or any thing of skin, wherein the plague is, for it is a fretting leprosy, it shall be burnt in the fire. And that the priest shall look, and behold, the plague be not spread in the garment, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in any thing of skin, then the priest shall command that they wash the thing wherein the plague is, and he shall shut it up seven days more. And the priest shall look on the plague, after that it is washed. And behold, if the plague have not changed his color, and the plague be not spread, it is unclean. Thou shalt burn it in the fire. It is fret inward, whether it be bare within or without. And if the priest look, and behold, the plague be somewhat dark after the washing of it, then he shall rend it out of the garment, or out of the skin, or out of the warp, or out of the woof. And if it appear still in the garment, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in anything of skin, it is a spreading plague. Thou shalt burn that wherein the plague is with fire. And the garment, either warp or woof, or of whatsoever thing of skin it be, which thou shalt wash, if the plague be departed from them, then it shall be washed the second time, and it shall be clean. This is the law of the plague of leprosy in a garment of woolen or linen, either in the warp or woof or any thing of skins, to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean. Psalm 37, verses 21 through 40. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fail, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. 
For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh the judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together, the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them, because they trust in him. Proverbs chapter 7, verses 13 through 20. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He is gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him, and will come home at the day appointed. Judith chapter 14 Then said Judith unto them, Hear me now, my brethren, and take this head, and hang it upon the highest place of your walls. And so soon as the morning shall appear, and the sun shall come forth upon the earth, take ye every one his weapons, and go forth every valiant man out of the city, and set ye a captain over them, as though ye would go down into the field toward the watch of the Assyrians, but go not down. Then they shall take their armor, and shall go into their camp, and raise up the captains of the army of Assur, and they shall run to the tent of hollow furnace, but shall not find him. Then fear shall fall upon them, and they shall flee before your face. So ye and all that inhabit the coast of Israel shall pursue them, and overthrow them as they go. But before you do these things, call me Achior the Ammonite, that he may see and know him that despised the house of Israel, and that sent him to us, as it were, to his death. Then they called Achior out of the house of Ozias, and when he was come, he saw the head of Holofernes in a man's hand in the assembly of the people. He fell down on his face, and his spirit failed. But when they had recovered him, he fell at Judah's feet, and reverenced her, and said, Blessed art thou in all the tabernacle of Judah, and in all nations, which hearing thy name shall be astonished. Now therefore tell me all the things that thou hast done in these days. Then Judith declared unto him in the midst of the people all that she had done, from the day that she went forth, until that hour she spake unto them. And when she had left off speaking, the people shouted with a loud voice, and made a joyful noise in their city. And when Achior had seen all that the God of Israel had done, he believed in God greatly, and circumcised the flesh of his foreskin, and was joined unto the house of Israel unto this day. And as soon as the morning arose, they hanged the head of hollow furnace upon the wall, and every man took his weapons, and they went forth by bands unto the straits of the mountain. But when the Assyrians saw them, they sent to their leaders, which came to their captains and tribunes, and to every one of their rulers. So they came to Holofernes' tent, and said to him that had the charge of all his things, Waken now our Lord, for the slaves have been bold to come down against us to battle, that they may be utterly destroyed. Then went in Bagoas, and knocked at the door of the tent, for he thought that he had slept with Judith. But because none answered, he opened it, and went into the bedchamber, and found him cast upon the floor dead, and his head was taken from him. Therefore he cried with a loud voice, with weeping and sighing, and a mighty cry, and rent his garments. And he went into the tent where Judith lodged, and when he found her not, he leaped out to the people, and cried, These slaves have dealt treacherously. One woman of the Hebrews hath brought shame upon the house of King Nabucodonosor. For behold, Holofernes lieth upon the ground without a head. When the captains of the Assyrians' army heard these words, they rent their coats, and their minds were wonderfully troubled. And there was a cry and a very great noise throughout the camp.